Hello. Hello, everybody. <laughs> so, thank you so much. It's my first uh, beacon. It's my first uh, presentation in English. I'm very excited. I'm very stressful also. <laughs> but uh, thank you to be there. Uh, thank you to, for inviting me to talk about uh, Flow at the Beacon. It's a great honor. My name is uh, Leo, and I was uh, animation director on Flow, the movie. Uh, so I'm going to talk about animation, uh, methods, and Blender. Uh, it's kind of a user's feedbacks. Uh, as you can guess, it's going to be technically basic, so you'll be able to take a breath. <laughs> I mean, all, all of you guys doing uh, amazing stuff. Is, I'm very impressed, so uh, uh, congrats uh, for what you're all guys doing. Uh, and uh, Blender is my new family at Hertz. <laughs> at Hertz. <laughs> since, I, since I start working, since I start uh, working on it eight years ago, uh, I'm very thankful and grateful and happy to have the opportunity to use this uh, in most of my projects. Uh, so, uh, thank you so much, Blender. <laughs> um, uh, now let's connect together. Uh, I'll start by telling you about my uh, background uh, and my cat. <laughs> uh, I started learning 2D animation at first because I love the connection with the tools and the way you can have a lovely result very fast. Uh, but I belong to this generation who uh, we've seen during studies, the studios move on 3D technology and abandoning their uh, 2D projects. So considering the situation, I felt compelled to learn 3D, and I have to admit, it wasn't easy uh, for me at first. You know, back then, 3D wasn't uh, very user-friendly uh, and attractive. Uh, so um, that was also when I realized that um, I love the animation more than drawing and uh, that I didn't really care about the technique if I can do animation. Uh, of course, after a period of, of adaptation and learning, I began to master 3D softwares and uh, to work in animation after school, but uh, still the 3D technique uh, wasn't very fun to use. To sum up, I love the animation, but I wish to have something more user-friendly for doing animation, like a, because I'm an artist, you know. Uh, and then Blender arrives. <laughs> so, uh, after learning basics in Blender, uh, I made my first shot uh, with Michel Oslo, um, for Michel Oslo uh, film, uh, Dilili Apari. Uh, a long shot with over 500 uh, characters in a 3D cutout. And it was uh, so fluid and easy to do uh, that I didn't leave Blender afterwards. We're going to look at this shot. Yeah. It was my first shot uh, with Blender. And you can see all the characters are flat. Michel Oslo is a traditional animation director. He used to making his project with different techniques and materials and using all of kinds of tricks uh, to tell his story. Um, for many reasons, Michel Oslo and uh, Guin Silbalodis, uh, the um, uh, flow directors, uh, are similar for me. Uh, both are authors and create their world without uh, limitations. They are guided by their uh, ID and uh, never think of the project with techniques constraint. And due to my function, uh, I have to make their artistic choice um, possible. And Blender is kind of soft, of soft uh, with many accessible solutions and which make uh, everything possible. After that, I did many projects uh, using Blender. And more I used it, and more I loved it. <laughs> Uh, no, the next one. Yeah. Oh, it just a um, water break. Okay. So let's talk about flow. When I was introduced to Gins by the producers of Sacre Bleu, I knew he had his own style and uh, was used to working alone. 
Thanks to my experience, I was able to adapt uh, to um, uh, to adapt uh, to his style and bring my knowledge to race reading. Uh, and we quickly we quickly um, got on the same uh, page, and I started developing and we started developing animation. So what is flow? Flow is about uh, a solitary cat uh, who had to leave his entire life uh, behind because of a monstrous uh, rise in waters and uh, was forced to live with um, other animal, animals uh, to survive. The film focused on the communication, understanding, uh, respect and solidarity between people. And uh, technically, it's a map uh, like this. Uh, it's a um, feature film, uh, it, uh, eight, 81 minutes long. Uh, you can, uh, I read the same thing. Uh, 22 <laughs> seconds is 307 shots, which is a uh, very uh, few shots for a movie. Uh, the average length of threat is uh, 380 frames, so it, it represents uh, 15 seconds. Um, it was 2 seconds per animator per, per day, but we will see after that. Uh, we adapt uh, with uh, the difficulty of the shot, um, and there are no dialogue in the film. It's one of the characteristics uh, to make some artistic choice after that. Um, We'll come back to this feature later. So, uh, how was the development first? Yep. So, what we received? At first, we, re we received already many useful stuff from Dreamwell uh, in Latvia. I will show you. Uh, I will launch the animatic in background to see how it looks. Up, we jump here up. Uh, just to, uh, to have some, uh, some example, maybe not, not this shot, yeah, okay. Um, so, all the characters uh, designed and rigged, uh, all the environment uh, were designed, and a full 3D animatic uh, made in Blender with advanced environments and a lot of animation and formation, uh, like um, the shift, uh, the eye direction, uh, some poses like stun or sit poses, etc. So, yeah, but for an animatic, it's very, it's quite uh, advanced, and it was easy uh, for me to, um, to 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 imagine uh, how to put the animation uh, inside those, those shots. It's an animatic, yeah. So um, a lot of time was saved because we could use the same file as Gint uh, to add our uh, animation. <laughs> so. so the development then uh, started to try their rig uh, because they made their own rigs and define uh, with Gint the animation style. It was obvious that we had to aim for anima uh, uh, realistic animation, but given the different situations, uh, the character would, fast, uh, would face and the time constraints, the production time constraints, we opted for a naturalist style of animation. In other words, we had to get as close as possible to the behavior, movements, and natural expressions of the animals, uh, while allowing ourselves a touch of freedom and uh, randomness. So let's look uh, on the first shot uh, done, I made um, during the development step. I watched uh, a lot of video references to match the style we had agreed on. Uh, at the advanced block stage, we discussed uh, the possibility of doing the animation in two after the, uh, the blocking step, yes. Uh, as many great films as have done, like Spider-Verse, Person Book 2, but given the mood of the film and with all the characters shifting during long shots and constant camera movement, it couldn't work on flow. Uh, but that shows how Gins uh, was open mind for his film. Uh, and uh, the result of this uh, test was, uh, was good for us. Um, also having a different uh, aspect of documentary filming in mind, I give the shot 
uh, a few intentional uh, staging mistakes, like, uh, like when here, the lemur um, uh, moves his head uh, out of the frame as he was continuing his movement uh, without being concerned for the camera. Uh, so it's some, uh, it was some artistic choice. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> ah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. No. Sorry for that. Uh, I have to come back to dry, okay. Okay. Okay, repros. <laughs> Sorry uh, <laughs> for the accident. Um, so then, with Christophe uh, Seu, I uh, think some guys know him, uh, as a technical director, we validated uh, what was working and raised uh, any issues that might affect uh, production. First, uh, the method. Uh, well, we called it organic. Uh, that means we'll be in constant communication with uh, the team and uh, the directors, organized or spontaneous, and we'll validate the progress step by step using specific workflow, uh, adapt to the website uh, production tracking Kitsu. Uh, we also have a gadget. Uh, it's an asset manager to make the connection between Blender and Kitsu uh, and make the file manipulation safe and convenient. Uh, I will sh uh, show you the workflow right after. Uh, so then, uh, validating the animation style, I'll have to develop the style more, uh, regroup all the information uh, for the future team, and prepare uh, everything that can help the animation before the production, like uh, animation li library, references, method explanation, etc. So I'll also develop this uh, after. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the rig uh, weren't optimal enough to fit with the production and reach uh, the animation needs. Uh, so the rig were too heavy uh, with too many bones, uh, but not detailed enough as facial expression. Uh, uh, in practice, the refresh rate, uh, the frame rate uh, was a little low, and if you consider uh, and if you consider animating a very long shot with many characters, uh, this would be uh, this would have been dreadful. Uh, also, some essential uh, bones were missing, and there um, there was no picker to help animator select bones. To finish, we conclude that it was better to rebuild the rigs uh, so we could have a very fitted rigs and easier to manage eventual uh, issues. Hopefully, we didn't need uh, to have all the characters uh, at first, so we organize a fabrication. I organized a, a fabrication order to be sure to have all the characters in time. So here's the workflow we have. Uh, so it's separated in the four uh, um, uh, step, uh, block A, uh, the essential uh, meanings, uh, block B, uh, more details, the spline uh, with a spline shot, uh, with um, a smooth curve and polish. Uh, polish is more for um, the checkup. So block A, in a way, it will reproduce the staging of the layout, will improve the poses and specify the intentions. Uh, we only give the essential information with key pose, the shifts, the expressions, etc., without making transition between poses. This is also the time to set up your scene uh, with constraint with uh, the path. For example, if a character runs, create the path with the right movement uh, speed and stops uh, according to the camera moves to check if the staging uh, works well. Um, take time also to, ch to show uh, the reference you want to use and discuss uh, them. In any case, the goal uh, in block A is to understanding uh, the intentions. So after, after validation, 
uh, we move on block B. Now that the intention has been validated, we continue the animation respecting the style uh, and any notes that accompany uh, the validation of block A. This is a movement to import the action from the action library uh, it's necessary, uh, if it's necessary on working on transition uh, between the poses. If a new animation cycle is, is required, uh, it can be created and validated at this step too. Uh, and everything must be set at this step and there must uh, be no more uh, nodes in the attention on the, the animation. Uh, but of course, if the, plane, the shot is very simple, you can just um, uh, go directly to the spline step. So spline step, uh, as it said, the idea is to transpose the same energy as a block's animation step in spline and improve the naturality, naturalistic style of the movement. Uh, we know that uh, the spline step tends to soften uh, the animations, so it's necessary to focus on timing, add some overshoot, desynchronize uh, parts of the character on, of the body and do some variations. Uh, add natural movement on the ears, on the eyes, and the tails, depending of the, uh, on the character. Uh, most of the um, most of an, uh, animation action uh, will be um, in the action library, uh, and uh, you can also create some jacks move in if necessary. Uh, and uh, all, all this um, all these rules was made to to do uh, the animation. Um, during long shot is because uh, some shot uh, can during 6,000 frame or, or more and uh, we have to um, to get the same energy uh, during the, uh, the beginning and the end of the shot. Uh, and uh, to finish the polish step, it's the last step for correction if needed, double check if there are some bugs or penetration. We can also improve some moves or shapes if necessary, like the tails uh, or expression, which uh, are more difficult to master. But in general, it should not change compared to the spline uh, animation. Mm. So what did I do to prepare the animation production? We saw, to, um, we saw the workflow uh, just before. Um, now I'm going to talk about how I organized um, sharings and communications. Um, co uh, coordinating the communication between the team was uh, pretty easy. We use uh, Slack, we can use uh, Discord and everything to send messages uh, to each other. And we created specific groups depending on the location of the team and the task, of course. Then I created a little website to regroup all the information and the references to avoid losing uh, information in some different trades. So I'm going to show you uh, this website. So here there are some global information, uh, some features here, the workflow also took a picture. <laughs> uh, here, um, some explanation from, for Kitsu, Gadget, uh, play, play Bless and Publish, uh, anything like that. Another category is uh, the animation. So I, um, I write uh, all the animation style guide uh, here. Um, my best reference was uh, Piper, uh, Piper from uh, Pixar. Um, I did also some uh, uh, facial uh, expression, uh, natural um, facial expression, because uh, it's not start, uh, the character don't start like that. Um, and uh, there are many other explanations, like spline. S the spline step, as I said, is uh, very particular, so I do many um, explanation to uh, like variation, uh, um, the jerk movements, as I said, uh, also some <laughs> bonus <coughs> <coughs> to explain uh, easily uh, for animators uh, how uh, a cat can move. Uh, I had, uh, I, uh, I compared um, uh, the body of the cat with uh, the, this instrument. I, in French it's accordion, but I don't know uh, it's, it's, uh, if it's the same uh, word in English. Okay. Um, 
So it could be easy to to um, uh, to get connection <laughs> with uh, some jack drawing. Uh, most of the uh, part, the biggest part was here uh, for uh, references. Uh, every characters are many, many, many information um, about the behavior, about um, uh, the specificity um, of. Uh, 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 how it works. So, for example, uh, here the cat can look on the side. Uh, if, he, if, if a cat doing like that, it's um, more, it's cartoon. Uh, so, uh, because he can uh, look on the side, he had to, um, to move his head and uh, it's uh, a specific thing. Uh, um, uh, spe it's a specific rule for animators. Uh, so you have to, to move the head of the cat very quickly. If you look at uh, your cat, uh, you will see he moves his head. Uh, in, always he moves his head like that. It's like of uh, eye dart, but it's more uh, head art. Uh, I, um, so there are another uh, uh, example with here. He, if you get attention for anything, for something, he first moves his ear and then he will see what happens if he is interested by that. Um, but sometimes you call your cat and he just moves his ear like that and no, I'm printed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to watch you. No. <laughs> Uh, another example for the tails, uh, if the cat jumps, he always um, uh, move up uh, his tails. I, don't, it's, I, I think it's um, because of the muscles, but um, yeah, it's, uh, it's something I, I, um, I, uh, I watch when I look at the um, uh, references. So, uh, I ask animators to do the same. Uh, so here, many reference for any movement, and uh, you can see after many video, we can uh, we have another characters, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so uh, about the processed uh, strategy is to manage the long and complex shots. Uh, but also to split up the work uh, well to make as, uh, it as fit as, uh, and fluid as possible uh, because of uh, a huge gap in complexity between all the shots I've created a difficulty scale uh, for the animators to be more accurate in uh, the distribution of the shots allowing them to be adapted uh, to the level of each animator um, you can sometimes get a long shot but very easy to animate Supposing, for example, that an imported animation from the library or another shot uh, is enough. So hundreds of frames uh, could be animated in only a few hours uh, or even less. Uh, this gives you more time to animate uh, other shots. Uh, about other shots, uh, I had to find a way to split them to reduce efforts for the animators team. Uh, there were two clear options. Uh, first was to divide the shot into smaller subshots. The second method was to distribute uh, characters between different animators and supervise the progress to, of each separated uh, animation uh, scene to make sure uh, the interaction between characters uh, would work. Uh, we'll see that in detail after. Then I checked the, the rig, I asked uh, to, uh, to be rebuilt, and uh, when the version were uh, advanced uh, enough, I identified uh, the repetitive animations in, in the movie, and I made this animation uh, for each character separately, which I stored uh, them in a library, like walking, running, uh, sleeping, some cycles uh, we can reuse uh, easily uh, in any time if needed. Up. If there are no internet, I have this. Okay, so now the recruiting. Hey, okay. Recruiting, uh, the recruitment is a delicate moment because uh, you deal with human beings and it's emotionally intense. You have to choose all the animators who will work with you along the project and they have to fit with your expectation, uh, but also hope to, that they will love the project and working with you. <laughs> So, um, uh, first of all, um, uh, we need to have the good sense uh, of uh, animation. 
it's not necessary to have working on big project or be a super skilled animators. Also, uh, the characters are not human, so there are uh, less works in acting uh, animation, but the minimum skills are required and uh, a fondness for body mechanics uh, also. Uh, about communication and uh, spirit, it's important to have a good feeling with the animators, so um, be sure that the communication works well and that could be involved uh, with the project. Uh, Flo was junior friendly, around 60% uh, of the team was juniors, uh, and it wasn't a problem because uh, many shots in the film were quite easy and juniors uh, for other shots uh, are fearless, <laughs> so they can be uh, challenged. Um, about the shooting, uh, many animators use, uh, are used to deforming or destroying uh, the rig to get the right shape. Uh, uh, hello, Publico. <laughs> 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 uh, find the uh, right silhouette and imp uh, or improve uh, movement uh, because usually the camera doesn't move too much and uh, uh, doesn't move. Oh, yeah, it doesn't move too much and won't be modified afterwards. In flow, you have long shot with constantly moving camera and Gins uh, lets us know that he could move the camera after the animation to adjust the staging or composition as he wished. Um, so you have to be sure that the pose could work in all directions to avoid some retakes. If we see uh, deformation after potential uh, retakes on camera, it's also a better... Uh, 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 sorry. Uh, 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 if you see the information after potential retracts on camera point. Uh, it's also better when you start a long shot to be clean and keep control of uh, uh, your character, of all the poses uh, all along. And ability uh, to go fast and spontaneous, it's more a mindset uh, than a skill. Le long shots are not usual uh, in 3D animation and some animators can be reticent to handle that. But if you work efficiently uh, by focusing on staging, timing, and strong poses without wasting time in detail the, uh, and using tools uh, on the animation library, uh, you can uh, animate hundreds uh, or thousands frames quite easily and uh, quickly. Uh, now let's see the, re the recruiting uh, animation test I made for. Okay. So, because many aspects of the film were very specific and unusual, uh, as we, uh, as, as I said, as we see, um, I wanted to test the animators in condition uh, after validating the demo. Uh, demo could be relevant for many aspects, but animation tests give more information about uh, the personality and the method of the animators because you get in contact for a couple of days and you can see how communication is doing. Uh, and check also within the 3D file uh, the poses and the animation curves in detail. Uh, for each of them, I gave feedback uh, and did some drawer in return. Uh, for this proposal, the idea is to test the animator's body's mechanic uh, skills and their understanding of the reference video. Uh, indeed, uh, they need to take inspiration from the reference while adapting them uh, to the situation in the scene. Uh, the height uh, of the boat uh, is not the same as the reference, uh, the video reference, nor is the camera, nor is the timing, so you have to adapt. I, uh, here they are the, the reference, uh, we, we saw them uh, on the side. Uh, so you can see uh, uh, one of the animation tests, it's uh, uh, Yannick Jacquin uh, test. It was, uh, he was on the team. Uh, in this test, for example, I love the way the cat licks uh, his paw after dropping the fish. The timings on the paws are not perfect, but uh, pretty good. And there are many cute detail, uh, details on the ear and the tails. We can see another, way, uh, another time. Um, so the test was good uh, for what I expect. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> we did a, a journey to the zoo, uh, which some animals in the zoo were present within the film. So there were a capybara, uh, some lemurs, uh, uh, 
and and that's all because after uh, uh, the uh, Sagittarius uh, bird is very rare uh, in a zoo and after it's uh, it's some uh, usual animal like cat and uh, dogs uh, uh, so they can, uh, the, the team can get uh, to know each other uh, and uh, immerse themselves in the film's mood in an original way. It was very fun and instructive. Uh, for example, the capybara always sleep and didn't move, and th that we did in the film. <laughs> uh, we organized uh, also an on-site blender training uh, to discover useful functions and specific tools adapted with the film. No, uh, of course, we didn't see all Blender, but uh, we, we spot a, a very little part for our movie. Um, so we took a look um, again uh, at the basics. Everything you need to know to control the antenna pass uh, and rigs in Blender and specific functions like follow pass to make trajectory by following a curve or copy-paste uh, collections to import character with all their constraints and animation uh, from one scene to another. Um, uh, we, yeah, we also uh, show the rigs, uh, their logic, and how to manipulate them. Uh, I will show you the rig of the cat. Hello. This is my setup. Windows. Uh, I work uh, on one screen, uh, one Windows uh, usually. So you have uh, here the animation editor or uh, the dub sheet here. Uh, I can switch uh, to to go to graph editor. It's uh, quite easy. No, no need to have another uh, Windows. Um, here is the timeline. I never use the timeline, but uh, I uh, need. Uh, the buttons, so I put it uh, on below, and uh, I have uh, everything I want. Um, the camera here um, for be sure what I'm doing, and the viewport. It's quite easy, um, and uh, yeah, um, uh, what I can do here is there are some uh, the picker uh, usually, but uh, I don't have the um, the tools here, so. About the, um, the rig, uh, you, you start like this. I, I will not uh, do the facial expression, uh, but I will show you some, uh, some cool things. For example, there are some uh, head tracker here. You can move the head like this. It's quite natural, um, even if I uh, do the things with my uh, mouse. Um, there are um, many, uh, many um, uh, uh, control and for um, uh, for the same thing. For example, for the uh, for the back, there are these. There are also uh, this in the middle, but also the yeah, uh, this. Um, there are also some. Uh, uh, um, control to to run the shape, and you, uh, and that also for um, round the back and do some uh, uh, accordioning stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, I I did a little animation with that to to show you uh, in action. Hop. So I made the animation in uh, 30 minutes. Just to look, uh, just to see uh, how I did. Um, it's quite easy. We, I, I had um, all the rules I made for. Um, you can see it works in every direction. Um, And it's uh, it's cool to to have uh, uh, many controllers because um, uh, I I prefer not use uh, some uh, rig layer uh, uh, some uh, animation layer, uh, but I um, I prefer to use rig um, inside uh, the movement. Uh, so for example, if I um, 
if I reduce the height of the back, it could be uh, the same animation, but more uh, more sneaky, or maybe no, maybe a bit uh, higher. But as you see during uh, the animation, you can uh, tweak um, the uh, the movement uh, very easy and uh, have a different. Uh, behavior. Uh, so yes, it's quite cool. Okay, for add-ons, we use uh, we use different add-ons, but not um, many, many add-ons. Um, uh, but these were necessary. Uh, the first two are very full for doing animation. Uh, there are many functions uh, for controlling, uh, manipulating, and modifying your movements and getting very accurate uh, easily. Um, Asset Brother uh, for showing and adding uh, predefined uh, animations into the scene, and the rig picker uh, was essential for manipulating and controlling the ring because uh, I don't, didn't show all the controllers, but there are more. Um, uh, copy global transform, uh, everybody knows that, but uh, very useful uh, because many shots uh, were um, there were multiple shifts and like characters moving in moving boat and a lot of constraint. So that was the best for sticking any controller in world space. F curve helper for managing and adding effect uh, to a selection of curves at the same time. Um, so yes, uh, the basics. So let's go to, to the long shot. Uh, these shots are very special. As animators are not used to animating such a long shot, so I had to find a way to reduce the effort on complexity uh, for the animator. Uh, as I said, uh, there, were, there are two ways to handle uh, uh, this kind of shot. Um, uh, depending on the, of the staging uh, and the interaction between uh, the characters. The first method is to split the shot in multi-part, taking advantage of the moments which have no characters on screen, or um, like uh, during a camera movement, you, 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 have, uh, you film uh, a character, then you film another character, and between uh, both uh, there are nothing, so you can just cut there. And, uh, uh, if or if a character are quite still, we can just uh, put the same pose and, and uh, switch uh, the scene. Uh, when each part of the shot is finished, uh, you could collapse them into one main file, uh, mostly uh, the one with the most interaction and uh, constraints, uh, because uh, it's uh, easier, uh, with a, a simply uh, copy past uh, from another uh, splitted shot split it in. Uh, the second method is to assign um, uh, the characters to different animators. So they could focus on uh, one or few characters that would be easier for them. After any improvement, uh, the animators can fetch the last version of uh, animation of the other characters and copy paste it uh, within his shot. So uh, they can watch the next step of their animation with the new animation of the other uh, characters. And I am here to supervise uh, everything. Of course, you, can, uh, you may also mix the two methods if needed. Uh, very useful in the case of a 6,606 frame shot with a dozen characters. And uh, we're gonna see an example of that. Not the big, big shot because it's too long. It's five minutes long. So. So we, uh, we're looking for the animatic. You will see many details. So there are many information um, already. Even the tails are uh, uh, moving and uh, things like that. The next step is, uh, is a mix of uh, between
not this one, yes. It's a, mist, a mix of uh, block A and block B, so you will see, um, uh, because of the cat is uh, the main uh, um, character in, in this shot, um, and the dogs follow the, him uh, and react his, uh, this movement, the most advanced uh, part was um, the cat scenes. And so that the animators of the dogs uh, could adapt his movement to those of the cat. Next, the spine step. So now you have the boss animation and it works. So what about the, the sound? <laughs> because there were no dialogues, the sound were made after the animation, like uh, the sound effects. Uh, we have to open the mouse uh, almost blindly according to the mood of the characters or the situation, and sometimes uh, randomly also, like for the lemur, because uh, we saw that, uh, we, we heard that uh, he's always making some noise. It's, uh, it's his behavior, he's uh, always uh, blah, 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 doing like that. So, okay, um, open his eyes, uh, his uh, mouth uh, randomly, and he, he, I'm, I will according with uh, your animation after that. <laughs> uh, so all the sound uh, came from uh, real animal <laughs> animals, uh, as you see. Um, except for the capybara, because its voice uh, was too ridiculous, and so we, it was replaced by uh, a baby camel. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so yes, to conclude, um, uh, what's going on on, on Flo uh, currently? Uh, Flo had the chance to be uh, selected at the International Fit Film Festival of Cannes, uh, which is one of the most f famous festivals uh, in the world. Since then, it's frequently uh, selected by um, film festival and has won many awards, uh, like in uh, ANSI, which he has won uh, four awards um, and at the animation festival, awarded also uh, at the film festivals uh, in Mexico, Australia, Canada, Poland, Greece, uh, China, which I've been there, it was crazy, uh, as, the, as best animated film, also in Los Angeles um, this morning. Uh, it's, uh, so it's a fantastic start uh, for the film, uh, and it's not released yet. Uh, uh, in one week in uh, France, and uh, it's very different uh, release date, uh, depending on the country. Uh, and I hope uh, that this kind of uh, family production uh, made with uh, Blender will give ideas to and encourage uh, the industry to use uh, Blender and on the, end, uh, on the other end, allow independent project uh, to come through. And uh, yeah, I, I uh, forgot to, to tell you that um, uh, the, the, the basic things, uh, we are 20 animators uh, for, the, for this movie and we did the movie in uh, six months. Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> it, uh, and as I said, um, half of the team was beginner uh, to Blender and half of the team was uh, junior, so um, yeah, all this method uh, works <laughs> and uh, I'm very happy to share it uh, with you, uh, the method. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> So now we can, uh, if somebody has some uh, question, I'm happy to, to announce that uh, there are an, an animators with me uh, at the Beacon, uh, Elodie D'Ambrosio, who work on the movie also. Yeah, 
have so you have two people to answer of your question. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm very happy to be here in Amsterdam and uh, to maybe represent my uh, 20 other colleagues, animators, who are not here. Uh, so, as Leo said, we are many juniors uh, people, so we are very lucky uh, to have the opportunity to learn Blender. Maybe half of the people didn't know Blender before, before this production. And personally, I was a 2D animator. So like two years ago, I discovered there is a third dimension. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, it was uh, very interesting. Uh, and uh, also I was very happy that my job was basically watching YouTube video <laughs> all day about cat, funny cats <laughs> and, and then to animate it. So yeah, thank you. And uh, I'm happy to answer some questions question about my job if there are some. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry, could you say Yeah, it can you say it more, uh, or maybe uh, is there a microphone? Or? Ah, yeah, yeah, okay. Another one? Ah, yeah, okay, okay. okay. I can bring. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, because it's difficult to, to hear. Uh, my question is about walk cycles for quadruped characters. I, I did an animation recently. I, you know, I don't do this professionally. Yeah? And so I started off by making a walk cycle. What I found was that, you know, unless they're just walking at even pace all the time on level ground, you're constantly having to move the feet around or whatever and, and customize it. Yeah. Do you find that's even worth your time to do walk, cy walk cycles like that? Or do you just, um, you know, do the blocking and then just move the feet between the poses? Yeah, no, no. yeah we create uh, um, uh, before the, um, the walk cycle uh, and we tweak it after for um, depending on the, back, the ground and uh, the um, the movement and of the camera, uh, we did some um, curves to to make follow pass uh, the the roots of the characters and uh, and then you, you we use uh, most of the time uh, uh, the clopy global transform to to get his uh, the pose uh, the pose of the characters uh, fitting the the ground and uh, and after one you, uh, you as you see uh, seen. There are many controllers to to make some uh, movement and uh, and uh, and fit uh, direction with the, the with the shot. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Is it on? It is on. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, thank you, first of all, for an excellent presentation. You're welcome. Uh, you mentioned working with an animation library. Yeah. Could you elaborate a bit more on that? Uh, okay. Yeah, Christoph Sir um, uh, managed to make uh, an asset browser with um, some uh, visual um, poses and um, and animation, uh, so you can. Um, you can just uh, click on them to, to put the animation uh, on the characters. Um, it's it's included uh, directly on Blender, so uh, it was uh, I know, new I know, I know. when I, when we start the project also. <laughs> and, uh, and thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> the thing is, uh, with the new post library, one of the things we wanted to have was animation snippets in there as well. Um, so it was prepared for having bits of animation. But like I never got that far, and it's just for single poses. But apparently you're using it. Yeah, for we we use also for animation, and uh, it's so cool. And you can also uh, shift, uh, 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 do some um, um, uh, arrangement for the poses. Is uh, you know you you can um, you don't have to to be one hundred percent of the poses. You you can uh, yeah the uh, do some twin machine to. <laughs> It's very nice. Blending. The blending, thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for my English. <laughs> thank you. And uh, maybe, maybe uh, Elodie, you, you, you have something to, to say for the user uh, ah. of... Um, 
Animation, you mean? Uh, of uh, animation library? Um. Um, yeah, so uh, I came at the very beginning of the project because I needed to learn Blender as well. And so I was with uh, over animators in Paris and they made like the very basic uh, poses for the library. And then uh, it's very useful for all the animators because we have like, uh, uh, how can you say, like a mo model, like um, references, like the cat is not a very uh, Disney expression. It should be realistic. It should be sad, but not like a human. Um, it's also into the staging. So uh, the library also helps. So the movie is uh, like... Uh, uh, homogenic, I <laughs> have to say. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, and it was very easy, easy to use as well. So we use a lot of actions because if uh, an animator ma made something very interesting like a walk, cycle, or jump, then we can import an action and use it, but at the same time we can uh, change it a bit depending on the background. And uh, so, yeah, yeah, it was very... Very useful, and I can say because <laughs> for me, I came from very far away, <laughs> and uh, it was quite uh, intuitive, so I appreciated Thank so it. Much. Yeah. Thank you. I know you have a question that from the beginning. Hello. Um, did you have any specific tools for creating the paths, or were you just using like NURBS curves for the animals? Um, no, we just create pass, and um, I just um, used um, yeah I I, I used um, the cursor uh, to um, to to put the curves uh, um, on the ground. Uh, when I edit the curve, all the um, the point uh, I uh, according them to the ground with the cursor. So it was uh, quite easy to. Um, to do your, um, your, your trajectory and, uh, and uh, fit it to the ground. Thank you. Thank you. Up. Um, I saw that you tried to inject some randomness into the poses that you decided to use. Did you contemplate using actual cats jumping onto the keyboards of the animators to create the randomness? <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, uh, um, so much yeah, we. Uh, mais attends, je pas tout compris. Uh, you mean uh, if we use uh, real cats? <laughs> the random fact. No, no, yeah, no. I use my cat. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, for, um, for example, some um, some uh, very usual. Um, uh, boring movement uh, are not in internet because um, people, when uh, they're doing videos, they want uh, their cat uh, do something very, uh, very specific. But uh, for example, I didn't saw some uh, a good video for a cat who come uh, on the side or something uh, very basic. So uh, I, for this moment, I I um, uh, uh, recording my uh, own cat. <laughs> You saw at uh, the first uh, uh, scene. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, uh, I have to say there was no torture, <laughs> animal torture, <laughs> because hopefully not spoiling the movie. The cat uh, is into the water many times <laughs> and is not feeling very good. So, but it was not from a cat video. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Um, I'm wondering, were there any uh, potential tools you wish were in Blender, where which could? Can I show you? <laughs> okay. Sure. Uh, there are something I want uh, um, very useful. Uh, we did with Samuel Bernou. Uh, ah, can I? Have the, yeah. Thank you. For example. Uh, it's about the selection uh, of curves of uh, in, in inside the uh, within the graph editor. Uh, for example, I want to to select uh, the point um, of like, the curve I selected. If I want to select them, it don't it doesn't work. Also, if uh, if I I want to click maybe on the point, may I think no, it works. No, no. Uh, so I um, I wish to to have some prior prior priority 
uh, from the curve I selected. Uh, I know there are tools uh, uh, we call the um, uh, um, uh, curve constraint, uh, only selected curve uh, constraint, but um, you have to find it here in the preference editor and animation and here. But then you can uh, select an, uh, another curve, so you have to disable and select your the curve. And, uh, so in, it, it took too long, uh, as you can see. And we built uh, um, uh, tools with uh, Sam uh, Samuel Bernou to uh, be uh, always on the only selected uh, selected curve K frame, uh, and when we mm, push uh, on the Alt uh, button, it uh, it, uh, it disable this, and you, you can able you. <laughs> It, 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 that was uh, the tool's uh, error because uh, after, uh, b before this function was there and uh, uh, was uh, in a channel uh, path, but it's, it, it was changed a few versions before. Uh, so then, uh, after we um, uh, after push the add button, uh, you can uh, select an, uh, any curve you want, and uh, when you um, uh, finish uh, the selection, you just uh, uh, move the uh, move the button, and uh, it was uh, it come back to only selected curve curve frame. It was the tools we, we made, uh, basic tools, but uh, if we can uh, let it uh, on the top of on selection, it will be uh, the best <laughs> for me. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, maybe your last one? One last one? In the... Uh, <laughs> let's catch it. <laughs> Hello. Hello. So this is less of a question and more I wanted to highlight something that you said. It's about how you don't use the timeline much because you're only using it for one or two buttons and that there was a discussion for quite a while, Pablo, about, <laughs> about how animators, like they very rarely use the timeline and we want all those buttons in the graph editor and dope sheet. I just wanted to reinforce that this guy just said that. And, <laughs> and, and bravo, bravo. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Everything. Thank you. Uh.